Okay, I'm going to show you the keyframing part of the descending energy ball half pipe animation. I'm not going to do the um, the reference camera setup if you're not sure how to do that. Go back to the previous tutorials that I posted and uh, and you'll get the idea of how to do that. Now, there is something different though when you look at this scene and that is that you'll notice that it has a bit of a different look in the viewport. The reason for that is that I've actually used a tool called the camera settings, so view camera settings uh, resolution gate. The resolution gate actually creates these gray bands on the side that actually show the boundary of the render. So if you look up here, you'll notice that my render is 1920 by 1080, which is what it should be. I went into render settings to do that. Um, and then what I did is I went over here. Uh, I can close that actually. Uh, I went over here to view and I went to <coughs> camera settings resolution gate to enable that. So this shows me exactly what's going to render when we come to that point. Now I'm going to turn that off a little later, but uh, I'll leave it on for now. It's fine. So let's go ahead and start keying this. So I'm going to do the positional keyframes first, and then I'll do the rotational keyframes. Let's go. So I'll select my main controller here, and I'll hit S to set a key. And I know that this first key is on a three, so I'll go to frame four, and we'll just move it into place. And as soon as the drawing moves, that's when I'm going to move my um, my object here. So I'll hit S, uh, go to frame six. Uh, actually, frame seven is when it moves. I did two threes here. So there we go. And there we are. Frame nine. Let's move it into position. So you notice I'm just scrubbing through a frame at a time. Frame 13, 15. Now I'm not worried about the rotations yet. I'm going to do them after. And I always move the, um, the object to the leading edge of my drawings. So there you go. Oh, and then I, I do have one more frame here that I did on the three. So there we go. Okay, so if I play this back, it's going to look kind of weird because of the non-rotation of the ball, but you get the idea. So it, it matches positionally. So that's great. I'm, uh, I'm happy with that. There's just a couple of errors that we do need to fix. Um, and I'm actually going to do them a little bit later, but I'll show you. <laughs> the problem is right here in frame 14. You see that? And then we have a problem here where the ball is taking the shortest path between this key and this key, which is here so and uh whenever you see the ball leave the path like that that's the reason that it's doing that so you'll we'll want to keep an eye on that and we'll fix it um, as we go along but i'm going to leave it for now um, and i'm uh, going to start looking at some of my um, rotations so um, to do the rotation we actually need to look at a new tool and uh, that new tool is um, the um, the graph editor. Yay, graph editor, we finally made it here. So I'm gonna to go to animation editors, graph editor. And uh, this is what we see when we look at the graph editor. Now, uh, I know that I'm gonna be working with my rotate Z, um, and right now that ball simply is not rotating at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna to go to my final frame in my animation here, and I'm gonna kind of, I don't know, guess um, how many rotations it should be. Now, um, there's an important point that I need to make here, and that is this. You know, in animation, if it looks right, it is. Let me say that again. I'm not being cute. 
in animation, if it looks right, it is. If it doesn't look right, it isn't. I don't care what kind of calculations you have, whether it's, you know, accurate or not um, in that sense. It all comes down to look. And that's what we're going for here. So um, I'm going to actually, you know, take this last key here, which I'll select. And I'm actually going to, you know, look at making it, I don't know, let's try minus uh, 450 degrees, something like that, okay? Um, and then I'll hit A in my graph editor. So you can see that, you know, it's staying where it is, where it is, and then all of a sudden, you know, in these last few frames, it does a lot of rotating. So to get rid of that or to take care of that, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna select all the keys except for the first extreme and the last extreme, and then I'll hit delete. So now what happens is I scrub the timeline. You'll notice that the ball is kind of rotating um, all the way through. Now, there are a couple of things that, um, that we um, know about animation. And that is, you know, um, when we look at the graph editor, that is, um, when we look at our curves, um, we can tell that something is moving at its kind of its fastest point um, by the drawings being spaced farther apart. So you'll notice that, you know, on this first roll, it's actually quite extreme. Actually, let me blow this window up a little bit and we can actually see it. You can see that, you know, the, you know, um, you know, the, the curve is getting more and more steep here. So where it really begins to pick up is like kind of right in this area here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go ahead and I'm going to set a new key um, on the object here. And then the same thing I'm going to do at frame 9 and I'll do it at frame 21. I'll show you what I mean. So we'll just set that aside or actually just close it. I'll open it a new way in a couple of minutes. At frame 21 I'm going to hit S and then I'll do the same thing at frame 9. Now um, what we're going to do is I'm going to actually adjust the curve to change the way that this ball rotates. So let's go to our panels and we'll go to a save layout called Perspective Graph. Again, this is a new tool. I understand that. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll make my top window. I'll go to Panels, Orthographic, Reference Camera, which will put me back in the reference camera. And I'm just going to zoom out a little bit here. Oops, wrong button. There we go. So I can see what I've got in my view here. Don't worry, I will be coming back to exactly where it was. Um, but we're also going to look at um, the graph editor here now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on the rotate Z. Now, you'll notice that this line is straight. And what that means is that the ball is rotating at the same speed throughout the animation. So, but we don't want that. We actually want the ball to rotate slower here and slower here. So the way to do that is to select the key, hit W to make sure that you're in your move tool, hold down shift and middle mouse click and drag. And we could change the severity or how steep the curve is by changing the position of those keys. So you'll notice now that the ball is rotating slowly here and then it picks up speed and rotates through. Maybe we should go and correct our position keys while we're at it. So let's go here and we're going to just fix those keys right now. But in order to do that we need to learn another new tool. So we'll come back to the graph editor in a few minutes. But what we're going to do is we're going to start working with Maya's ghost tool. Now in order to do that we have to be able to work on the geometry in this scene and we have to be able to select this geometry now if i click on this you'll notice that oh let me uh, actually put this back into reference mode here um, you'll notice that i can't select the ball but there is a way to do it again i'm going to go to my windows menu and i'm going to go to general editors and i'll go to hypergraph hierarchy so that's windows general editors hypergraph hierarchy and that's going to open up this window here. Um, let's blow it up for a second. Oops, there we are. And I'll hit A to frame all in the scene. Now we have all kinds of different nodes here that make up our ball rig. These are the geometry nodes. And you'll notice that everything is grayed out except for this one here. That's because they're all hidden right now. 
we are going to select the one that's not hidden, which is our active ball type. So if I actually close the hypergraph now, you'll notice that it has selected the geometry. That will allow me to now go to my animation menu set up here in the top left hand corner. And then I'll go to visualize ghost selected options. And these are the correct settings. I'm going to reset it so that it's set to what you're looking at when you open it. And I'm going to go to type of ghosting, custom frame steps. I'll set this to one and one. And then what I'll do is I'll go ahead and hit ghost. Now what I see is my previous position and the next position to the current position. So I could select my controller and I could actually move the ball so that it's about halfway in between both of those places. Maybe it's still picking up speed, so I'll favor it towards this position just a little bit more. All right, and then I'll set a key. So you can see that I've now gone to ones here. I know that there's an error here as well, so I'm going to correct it really quickly by just moving it down to the line and hitting S. There we go. So that's corrected now, and the ball is following along the curve. We have another problem here. Let's go ahead and correct it. And I'm going to push this one a little bit so we have a little bit more favor on the acceleration here. And I'll hit S. And then I'll go to frame 18 and correct it one more time and basically center it. And now we have this. And you can see here that I now have a kind of a, an, uh, you know, it's a little better representation of what the rotation should look like. It's still not right. So I'm going to um, tap my spacebar again and come back to my graph editor. And in the graph editor, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select on rotate Z. I'll select all of the keys and I'm going to click on auto tangent. As a matter of fact, what I'm going to do is select all of the keys and put them into an auto tangent mode. Now, um, <clears throat> we can watch this again here and we'll see whether we're actually getting kind of a, a better representation. Not bad. It's a little distracting here with the ghosting on. So we'll go back to visualize and unghost all and then we'll play it back. You can see that it's still not quite right. And I'll tell you what I mean by that. Um, if I play this, it looks like it's sliding at the beginning. It's ever so slight, but it actually looks like, you know, it's spinning in place. You see that? It's kind of spinning in one spot here. So my acceleration on this still isn't right. On this side, it's not too bad. So let's go and correct this a little bit more. So we'll tap the space bar. And what I'm going to do is I'll just go to where I kind of see the problem happening is right in here. So I know this. If I go back to rotate Z here and select this key, I'm going to move it up again to just make it a little less severe. And I'll scrub just to make sure that it's rolling. Ah, that's better. And you can see that it's now rolling all the way through. These keys here are kind of extra. So I'm going to delete them. And let's see what we have. Ah, not too bad at all. So that's a basic introduction to the graph editor. And, and truthfully, if you've already done your rotation um, in Enox class, uh, then you don't need to worry about this um, because you just you know follow your own rotation. But if you do want to correct the rotation, you'll end up with a curve that looks something like this. And it will repeat until the cycle ends. Now, what's happening here is that it's rotating slowly, and then it begins to pick up speed, kind of hits its maximum velocity here, and then begins to slow down. I'll tap on my space bar, and you can see it a little bit more clearly. It's kind of like a ski hill. The steeper the curve, the quicker the motion. In this case here, it's rotation. Um, and that curve looks pretty good. So let's go back here now. And what I'll do is I'll hit Alt, right mouse button, just click and drag, set my scene up one more time. And I'm going to hide my curves now. So show NURBS curves off. And I'll deselect. And let's see what we have. Ah, not too bad. 
Although it is, look, see how it's sliding a wee bit at the end there? So we will correct that. Actually, let's do one other quick thing. Um, in my reference camera, I'm going to actually come in here and I'm going to um, turn off the um, the reference um, mode on the ref cam layer. And I'm going to select that layer, hit control A to open the attribute editor again. And what I did is I actually created a background image that doesn't have animation on it. Um, and I took the exact same path that I used here and just rendered it without the ball. So I'll hit open and um, then I'll play this one more time. We'll see what we get. And I'll also uh, maybe increase it to full value. Although it looks a little better like that. Okay. Let's play it one more time and we'll see what we end up with. Yeah, it's still sliding. See how it's sliding at the end there? So in other words, it the rotation stopped a little too soon here, and now the ball is sliding in place. So we want to correct that. So I'm going to do that really quickly. NURBS Curves, select it, go back to the graph editor, and I'll scrub here. And I'm actually going to select these two keys here, hit F to frame them, and then, you know, it's in here that the ball kind of stops rotating, you'll notice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just, yeah, it's just on <coughs> these last, sorry about that, take a quick drink of water. All right, sorry about the delay. I'm going to grab this key here <coughs> and move it up just a wee bit. I've got the move tool on. But you can hit W to make sure. Hold down Shift, click and drag up. And let's see what we have now. See that? Might be a little bit too much. Let's bring it back down. There, not bad. So let's have another look at it. So if we scrub through, oh gosh, I actually got to go back here and see what I did to my curve here. Rotate. Oh, I'm going to have to play around with that curve just a wee bit here. Now it's going a little too fast here. So I might have to actually go and put in a couple of extra keys. And we're going to get into that more um, over the next couple of weeks as we do um, the, um, the pendulum animation. But all in all, I think this is, you know, it's like, I don't know, 90% of the way there. Let's have one more quick look. I'll hide my NURBS curves. Oops. There we go and play it back and it is still sliding in place a wee bit so what i would do there is i'd probably put in an extra key or two and just you know control that a little bit more but all in all it's not looking too bad well there you have it so we've looked at some new tools here we've looked at the resolution gate um, I'm going to go turn that off right now. Camera settings. Again, you click on view in your um, um, in your viewport menu set. There you are. Camera settings, resolution gate. Well, I'll actually choose no gate now. And you'll notice that it kind of overlaps my viewport here. That's okay because what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to play blast options. And um, this will be fine. Image, good. JPEG, good. But it's from the render settings. And again, we're doing half the size, so that's okay. Um, we'll name this file. Um, we'll call it um, half pipe done. Um, and make sure that's going to the right folder, which is my half pipe project images. That's good. And I'll go ahead and play blast it. And you'll see that it gives me a nice render. And we're not going to wait to watch that here. What we'll do is we'll actually 
do one more quick tutorial where I show you a little bit about how to use After Effects.